Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, Baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches us that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. Therefore depart, you unclean spirit, and make room for the Holy Spirit. How are you named? Ruthie Marie Anderson, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. O almighty and eternal God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, I call to you on behalf of your servant, Ruthie, who asks for the gift of your baptism and desires your eternal grace through spiritual rebirth. Receive her, Lord, and as you have said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. So now give your blessing to her who asks, and open the door to her who knocks, that she may receive, may obtain the eternal blessing of this heavenly bath, and receive the promised kingdom that you give. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who according to your righteous judgment condemned the unbelieving world through the flood, and in your great mercy preserved believing Noah and his family, who drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and with his army in the Red Sea, and led your people Israel through the same sea on dry ground, thereby foreshadowing this bath of your holy baptism, and who through the baptism of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, sanctified and set apart the Jordan and all water to be a blessed flood and a rich and full washing away of sins. We pray according to the same boundless mercy, that you would graciously behold Ruthie and bless her with true faith in the Spirit, so that through this same saving flood, all that has been born in her from Adam, and which she herself has added thereto, may be drowned in her and be engulfed. Grant that she be separated from the multitude of unbelievers, preserved dry and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, and serve your name at all times, fervent in its spirit and joyful in hope, so that with all believers she may be made worthy to attain eternal life according to your promise. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought little children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out, both now and even forevermore. Ruthie Marie Anderson, do you renounce the devil? Yes. Do you renounce all his works? Yes. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Do you desire to be baptized? Ruthie Marie Anderson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now receive this burning light, live always by the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom that shall have no end. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth with water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, Strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Peace be with you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and he forgave the iniquity of my sin. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the festival of Pentecost is written in the first book of Moses, known as Genesis, chapter 11. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second lesson is written in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of that great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory be to you, o Lord. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, they belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. 
But the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. If anyone loves me, Jesus says, he will keep my word. What that suggests and teaches us is that not everyone does or will love Jesus, even among his disciples. Those disciples that were gathered in the upper room the night Jesus was betrayed, even to them Jesus has to say, if you love me. Simon Peter, for example, the first Pentecost preacher, certainly loved Jesus. But in the moment when Jesus was on trial, when Peter was afraid to save his own skin, denied even knowing Jesus, so that Jesus later on had to ask him,
Three times he asked, asked him, Peter, do you love me? My dear friends, baptized children of God, catechumens, lifelong church members, it's a valid question. It's not a given. Do you love Jesus? And will you forever? See, the truth is that, that love for Jesus is not natural. It does not come naturally, not to our natural, sinful flesh. We are born, each of us, born into this world without true fear of God and love for him. We do not, we cannot love Jesus by nature. That's why we baptize babies. But this question is a question that is on our minds for many of us. We're concerned. Concerned about the children that we bring to baptism. Concerned about the children that we bring to church to teach, see, confirm. The children that we eventually let loose out on the world to their jobs, to their new families, to work to life on their own? Will they love Jesus forever until they die? And sadly, the answer, the answer is not always yes. Because, frankly, we do not know the answer be because we don't know the future. We don't know what trials, what temptations, what crosses they will bear. We don't know where life will take them. We don't know what things they will love. But Jesus does. Jesus knows all of that. Jesus knew what was coming ahead for his disciples, just as he knew what was ahead of him on the night he was betrayed, the night before he died. And he knows what is coming for you and for your children. That's why Jesus says these things. That's why he promises the Holy Spirit. Jesus knows, he says, the prince of this world is coming. He knows who the devil is. He knows what the devil wants to do, what he is capable of. He knows what he has done and what he will do. For he is not called the prince of this world for nothing. All you need to do is look around at the, at the world you live in and see the proof of his power. He's strong. He delights in devouring Christians, ripping their faith from their chest and their love for Jesus. He has no hold on Jesus, mind you. Any more than the death and the grave could hold Jesus in? No. But you and your children? That's another story. You and I, we're, we're fairly easy prey. You see, he doesn't have to get us to, to hate Jesus or to, to curse Jesus. Only to love the world more. Only to love the things or the, or the people of this world more than him. Do you love Jesus? Will you forever? It's not as easy or as natural as you might think. And so, so that his disciples and you and your children would believe in him and love him even when he is gone, Jesus speaks. He uses his word, and, and that word of Jesus comes to you by his Holy Spirit. See, you weren't there in that upper room the night Jesus was betrayed, but still, you hear the words of Jesus. And that's because of Pentecost. Because this is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is, through his own miracles and the gift of human language, translated, printed, preached, the word of Jesus comes to you. 
Jesus says, if anyone loves me, he will hold to my word. What does that mean, to, to hold to Jesus' word? Well, first of all, you can only hold on to something that you are in contact with. We come into contact with the word of Jesus for you and I usually by hearing. For faith comes by hearing. That's what we do here. We come to be in contact with, to, to hear the word of Jesus. That's what we do in, in catechesis in all its forms, whether, whether Bible class or catechism class or Sunday school or the Christian home. And then, secondly, come into contact with it, and it means to adhere to it. Imagine, suppose, that you're floating down the river, swept away in a, in a river, and there in the middle of the river, as it, before it comes to a waterfall or, or rapids or something, there is a large rock, and so you grab on, and you hold on for dear life. Note, you are the moving object. The rock stands firm. It, it doesn't change. So when we hold on to the words of Jesus, it, it, it means that we're the ones that can move, that's the thing that must stay, stay the same. And we hold on to it. Means that if it says something that, that isn't quite the way I think it or I feel it, it doesn't change. I don't change it. It changes me. But the word of Jesus, holding to the word of Jesus, means that the word of Jesus can and should teach us, correct us, Rebuke us if necessary. And when we do that, when we do that, we hold on to Jesus' word, his word, his spirit. It, it keeps us safe and secure, as we heard in, in the holy ark of the Christian church, in the faith, in the love of Jesus. It does something to us. It changes us, teaches us, strengthens us, and it will keep us and comfort us, no matter what the prince of this world might throw our way. So that when we are afraid, afraid of what will come upon us and upon our children in days to come, when our hearts are troubled, perhaps because we, like Peter, have, have not shown the love for Jesus as we should, even have denied him by our words, by our actions, by our life, It is this word of Jesus that comes to you by his spirit, that, that forgives your sin, that comforts you, that comes before you like a rock to hang on to dear, for dear life, so that there, in, in Jesus, you are finding peace and forgiveness in the word, in the blood of Jesus. My peace I leave with you, Jesus says. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. In the wonderful Christian novel, The Hammer of God, there's a story of an old man who is dying. His daughter comes to his bedside and says, You are thinking about Jesus, are you not, Father? The father answers, I am not able to. I can't think any longer. But I know that Jesus is thinking of me. Do you love Jesus? Will you love him forever? I don't know. And our sinful natures and the prince of this world fight against it that we are not able to, certainly as we should, I don't know what the future holds, but this I know. My Jesus loves me and you and your children. That's his word.
That's his promise. That's the work of the Holy Spirit that he proclaims now and again and again to you. To work in you, to create in you a new heart, a new spirit that would love Jesus. And that would all the more hold to his word, hold to it for dear life. Keep his word and his word, his love, will keep you. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing the Christian faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth.
Dear brother in Christ, our Lord Jesus said to his disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. In obedience to the Lord's command, you have been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You have been taught the precious truths of the Christian faith as confessed by the Evangelical Lutheran Church. You know what God has given you by his grace and what he expects of you as his dear child. You now have the privilege of receiving the Lord's body and blood in the sacrament of Holy Communion. You are here to make a public confession of your Christian faith. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Romans, said, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your mouth that you, with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Therefore, lift up your heart to the God of all grace and joyfully answer these questions. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge that in baptism God gave you forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation? Do you reject the devil along with all his lies and empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He'll come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you believe all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do, and I ask God to help me. Do you believe that the true, the teaching of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know it from Luther's small catechism, is faithful and true to the word of God? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this teaching and to endure all things, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, and I ask God to help me. Do you intend faithfully to conform all your life to the teaching of God's word, to be faithful in the use of word and sacrament, and in faith and action remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as long as you live? I do, and I ask God to help me. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and have been absolved of your sins as you continue to hear the Lord's word and now also receive his blessed sacrament. He who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Parker Robert Geisfeld. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Your confirmation verse is 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. Fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in him the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to his Savior. Deliver him from the power of Satan and preserve him from false and dangerous doctrines, that he may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen him to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone, 
Enable him to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and, their and his neighbor and to bear his cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of his body to life immortal. Through the Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Please stand. For all baptized believers, that they would be given ears to hear and an eagerness to learn all that the Holy Spirit teaches them about their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the salvation they have through him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For spiritual renewal in our congregation, district, synod, and the whole church on earth, that by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we would long to keep Christ's word, dwell in his peace, sing God's praises, and love our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace among the nations, for those who rule over us, for those who protect and defend us, and for freedom that the peoples of our world would be blessed to live in peace and quietness, unhindered by threats of violence, oppression, or fear. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those afflicted in body or spirit, that their hearts would neither be troubled nor afraid, for nothing can separate them from the love God has for them in Christ, who has overcome the ruler of this world and secured for them eternal peace in his kingdom, which has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who come to the holy altar this day, that they would come in faithful reverence and awe, recognizing how awesome God is in his sanctuary in giving them the very body and blood of their Savior to eat and drink for the forgiveness of their sins and the strengthening of their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, all glory, honor, and worship is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy God, almighty mighty Lord, gracious Father, you have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You lifted Noah and his family in the ark. You promised to bless all nations through Abraham. You delivered Moses and the Israelites. You renewed your promise through the prophets. And now you have spoken through your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will. In your tender mercy, you gave him your one and only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. 
by the one offering of himself, he made there a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious Father, remembering his blessed passion, mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, we humbly thank you for this wonderful gift of salvation through your Son's own body and blood. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promise, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and our love, increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.